no, no. I'm just waiting for you all to be quiet and reminding you to be a good audience. Um, there may be some funny things here today. That's fine. You can laugh. But, but be a polite audience and really listen to our guest. Or even when I am talking, you should be listening. Right? Because we're at Cab Calloway School of the Arts where we we relish in performances and in theater etiquette. So let's make sure we, we keep on top of that today. Okay, thank you. So this was kind of like a little, we kept this under wraps a little bit about who was gonna be our next guest. Um, and some of you already know, um, but this might be a surprise to some of you, right? Um, can you please help me welcome Mr. Brian Drake? <laughs> Yes, yeah, very pleasure, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Hello, have a seat. <laughs> All right. So, um, I have uh, a feeling I'm going to be talking a lot. I think you will be. Okay. Um, fine. So, I have some questions for you. Oh, God. And uh, he's already getting the cough drop out. I'm sorry, uh, I'm a little parched. <laughs> Are you sick like everybody else? I'm always sick from August through June. I hear you. I keep being surrounded by other people's children. They make me ill. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's start, Mr. Drake. Where were you born? Uh, I was born in Patterson, New Jersey, okay. at the St. Joseph's Hospital, from what they tell me. I don't really remember. <laughs> um, and spent the first year or two of my life in Little Falls, New Jersey, before moving to East Windsor, where I grew up. OK. Um, so how many people were in your family when you were oh growing up? Oh, god. Um, I am one of five children. OK. I am the fourth. So I'm used to not being listened to on anything. I hear that. Um, when I was born, um, we, lived in, we lived in Little Falls, New Jersey, in a Cape Co little Cape Cod house. So it wound up being my parents, their five children, and my grandmother in a Cape Cod. Wow. She kept threatening to move out. <laughs> your, your mother? My grandmother. Oh, your grandmother. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I thought maybe your mother would. Um, okay, so... Um, I, I asked, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many questions. Um, That's terrifying. There, uh, there is a story apparently about your sister and your eye. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I please hear okay. that? So, um, because I'm a science teacher, mm -hmm. we have to start the year talking about lab safety and things like right. that. And when I'm talking about making sure to talk about eye protection, I talk about two actual experiences that occurred to okay. me. Neither one of them in a science lab, but both involving my younger sister. <laughs> um, to put it mildly, she stabbed me in the eye twice when we were children. <laughs> okay? Um, neither one of those times was actual, intentional, or with malice. It was just stupid little kids being stupid little kids. Okay. We were, when I was in kindergarten, we were um, walking outside. We had woods in our backyard. We were essentially playing soldiers. We had big branches of trees as rifles. <laughs> and my sister was marching in front of me, and I was marching behind her, and she stopped, and I failed to notice. Oh. So I walked eyeball first into a <gasps> stick, and a chunk of it broke off in my eyeball. Oh, my gosh. Um, the absolute best part of that was it was kindergarten. I had show and tell covered. <laughs> Ew. So like, did you have to go to the hospital? I had a patch. Oh. I, I believe we just went to an eye doctor. Okay. Um, they had to put a patch on to put s and put something in my eye to, to help extract the splinter. Obviously it was like on the white part, not like the, okay, but that, cause yes. you can still see. Yes, and she got me again in fifth grade with one of those little sweet gum seed pods. Everybody around here calls yeah, them monkey balls. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, she found the largest one of these we had ever seen. She launched it at the back of my head, and my Irish luck all being bad, I turned to say something to my sister at that moment and caught it once again in the right eyeball, where a chunk of it broke off into my <laughs> eye, and I got an eye patch to go to fifth Wait, grade. Wait, it was still the same eye? Same eye. Um, you see that I wear glasses now? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, this one has the lower prescription. She corrected it a little bit. She is a doctor. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. That's She's so a crazy. podiatrist, though, because she can't okay. be trusted around us. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be good. Okay, <laughs> um, so where did you um, where did you go to school? Like, 
elementary school. Uh, high I grew school. up again. I grew up in New Jersey. Right. Um, I had a lot of years of Catholic education, so I am still recovering from that yeah. trauma. Um, <laughs> but I had had rather enough of it by the time I finished eighth grade, and somehow managed to con my parents into letting me go to the local public school so that I could actually meet people who lived in the same town I lived in. Wow. Catholic schools are a little more spread out yeah, where I came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so did you, um, like, what were your favorite classes in high school? Well, I'm a nerd, so science. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like where I went with my life. Right. Um, but I was also involved, my high school had four different choirs. I sang in three of them. Um, my favorite, my favorite one, just for when it met, was the men's homeroom choir. Okay. We met during homeroom. Our homeroom was five minutes long, and we met during homeroom. No. So it was very short, and we learned three songs for the winter concert and another three songs for the spring concert. And because it was shortened, we shortened the name, and instead of calling it the men's homeroom choir, we just referred to ourselves as the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, so what brought you to Delaware then? How did you end There's up There's this university in Newark. Yeah. I went there. Okay. And then um, you just stayed here. And well, when I got to the point, okay, um, my cooperating teacher retired while I was student teaching. So I wound up taking over his wow. job because okay. he wasn't there anymore because right. he left while I was student teaching. Wow. Um, so I took over his job, and he was trying. He actually tried very hard to get me his job permanently. But he and the principal um, didn't get along, okay. so that didn't help my chances. Right. <laughs> so then you ended up here. But I ended up here. I moved from New Jersey um, with the promise of a job at Conrad that fell through. Um, I moved from New Jersey with my car, my clothes, and forty dollars, and never went back. Wow! <laughs> wow! That's awesome. So. And I've been poor ever since. <laughs> I know, we're <laughs> teachers. <laughs> we have lots of money. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, well, I was going to say speaking of poor, I know you, guys, <laughs> you, you just bought a house. <sighs> Can we discuss some okay. of the... So the pile of rubble in which I currently live. Yes. Um, my wife and I, my, my wife adores old houses. I don't really care either way. For me, I needed a house with air conditioning. Mm -hmm. That was my primary goal. That was number one. Garage was second. Right. Okay. We found a, an old house. We found a hundred-year-old house with air conditioning and a garage. It became our house. Um, not sure about the honesty of the people who sold us this house anymore. Mm. It has been determined to fall apart on us ever since. It's been it's been a trial, um, but it's been I mean it's been fun too. I I, I deal with stress by laughing at it. Right. Um, I've had a lot of laughter. I've had a lot of laughter. I know, I've seen some of your posts on I Facebook. I think I've gotten the bathroom to stop raining into the living room. Oh. I think <laughs> it's not happening anymore. Oh, that's good. So that you learned some skills. I've learned how to repair garage doors. Um, so, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for plumbers. Yay. All right. I yes. may become one when I finish teaching. I saw that you I think yeah. <laughs> You've got an ex enough experience. I, I've, got, I've got the right place to work. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay, so um, growing up, or even now, like pets. Let's talk about. Ugh. Did you have pets growing up? Always. Okay. Um, my backyard, the house where I lived in um, East Windsor, our backyard was essentially a small animal graveyard for all of the pets that died over yes, the years. Yes. It got, and I'm not <laughs> joking about this, it got so bad in that backyard that once while digging a hole to bury one, we dug up another. Because we just forgot Happy was there. <laughs> okay, Happy was a guinea pig. Um, m we had very many guinea pigs named Happy. Apparently, it was the name. Um, but, yeah, so we always had, we generally have always had cats. Um, my mom always seemed to be very against dogs mm -hmm. until one day she walked in and had a dog. And we have no idea why this dog came home with mm. our mother, but suddenly we had a dog. Huh. Um, and we had her... For probably about 10 years, um, and she helped convince me that, yeah, I don't think I'm a dog owner either. And we still have cats. <laughs> <laughs> Three currently. That's, that's okay. So then um, you told me in passing something about, like, 
like stray animals like <laughs> just show up. Okay, so I've been here an extremely long time. Yes. I've been teaching here since 1996. Okay, th I think there's only two teachers in the building who've got me beat. Okay, and that would be Christine Lagola and Mr. Tharp, right. who I think just melded over from, <laughs> yes. from Wilmington High right. and just, you know, stayed here. Yes. So the two of them, the two of them got me beat so far. We'll see who lasts longer. Okay. Um, my bet's on Mr. Tharp. Okay. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, when I started teaching here, and I don't know why this started, but it was, I think it was just the fact that I was one of the science teachers. Every time somebody found a wounded animal anywhere in this building, suddenly it came to me. And I started to refer to myself as the bird man of Cab Calloway. <laughs> <laughs> because every time somebody found a broken bird, I wound up with a broken bird. I think once in Mrs. Lagola's room, a small falcon flew into her window, no and they called on me <laughs> to go rescue it. This is a bird of prey. This is right, talons yeah. and beak yeah, and yes. tearing and flesh and blood. And so I went in and got it. Um, <laughs> because who else was going right. to? So wow. yeah, anytime, anytime an animal breaks, I'm expected to somehow fix it. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're the science, the science guy. Yeah. But but you're not the. Yeah. Mr. Cafeter, Mr. Rigby, Mr. Beam, life science teachers. Yeah, yes. Me, not so much. Right, right, right. <laughs> 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 okay. Um. <coughs> so, what was your first job? <laughs> My very first job, um, and this was because I sang with the choir in my high school, okay. and every four years they went on a trip to England to perform in this big international music festival, and our choir and band were part of this. Okay. Okay? So I needed to save to go to England. So I decided to find a job, and it needed to be close because I couldn't, my parents couldn't promise mm -hmm. me that they could drive me, and I lived in New Jersey, which meant I didn't get my license till 17. Oh, really? Yep. Oof. Um, and my birthday's late in the year. So I wound up getting a job at the Lowe's East Windsor Twin Cinemas when I was 15 years old. Okay. Started off making three fifty an hour, which was better than minimum that wage. That is better than me because it was three thirty five. It was three thirty five when I started 335 working. Three thirty five an hour was minimum wage when we were when we were your age. Um, and with that three fifty an hour job, over the course of two years, I managed to save up enough money for a thousand dollar trip. To California. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't spend anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had a goal, and you were like... Then I started dating, and suddenly I didn't have any money anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> so, you mentioned to me something about being in bands in high school? <laughs> no, this was or not high college? school. This was here. Oh, it was here? I was... Yeah. You were in a band while you were teaching? I... Okay. So... Um, the very first seventh grade science teacher ever hired here. Her name was Karen Key. Um, and then she got married and became Karen Reed. But before she got married, she had a boyfriend who was not the guy she married. Okay. Okay. And he was a guitarist in a band. And I like to sing. And I, I am a classic rock person, very much so. And <laughs> her boyfriend lost, their band lost their singer. And she happened to mention it to me. And I said, well, I want to sing in a band. <laughs> so she put me in contact with them, and I went and auditioned for the band, and suddenly I'm in a band, and I'm the front man. I'm the singer for the band. I didn't play any instruments. I don't play instruments. I should not be allowed near instruments. <laughs> okay? But we wound up, we wound up getting several gigs, and we're doing, we're doing, there was this dive bar in Smyrna. Mm. It has since been bulldozed. It doesn't exist anymore. But the managers of this bar loved us. And I don't know why, because we sucked. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And the very first night we were there, a biker gang showed up. And there were like 40 bikers and their girls in this bar. Yeah. And at one point, the head biker's girlfriend struck up a conversation with me. Oh, no, that's not good. And the leader of the gang was unhappy about <laughs> it. So when we finished for the night, oh the entire God. gang was waiting for me outside. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. How do you get out of that? I learned a very important thing about that bar. It had another door. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my gosh, that's like scary. The bass player sneaked me out in his car. <laughs> <laughs> I may have been under instruments. And that, but you kept, but you kept like going uh, back to that. Same place. Yep. Several times they loved us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's switch gears a little bit. <laughs> um, who, who are some of your uh, role models growing Ooh, up? Oh God. Like who did you look up to? Doesn't have to be somebody famous. You want my number one? Yeah. Jim Henson. Oh. <laughs> I love Jim Henson. There is. No, probably no single human being in the world who I look yeah. up to more. I love Jim All he did was shove his arm in a sock and make it do voices. He was the Muppets creator. He created the Muppets. <laughs> he was the original voice of Kermit the Frog, and he's my absolute favorite one of the entire Muppet crowd. Oh, Kermit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I loved, Piggy. I, I loved um, the Muppets. And I love that, that Jim Henson was both Kermit and Ernie, mm -hmm. and their voices are the same. It's a slight change mm -hmm. in pitch. Because you can start it, Kermit the Frog, and all you have to do is pitch it up just a little bit, and it's Ernie. That's awesome. <laughs> There's no difference. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Those are very good impressions. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, so, um, so let's talk about theater. Oh, God. We were just talking about this before you all came in. Like It's been a while. Like how we met. Uh-huh. Because it was the theater before it was. I started here. It was. So um, I did a really crappy audition for you. I was directing <laughs> Greece at um, it was then called Coverbridge Theater, which is yes. now Milburn Stone Theater, um, and and Mr. Drake auditioned for me. And, and it went badly, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the audition. You lied. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> it just, you were a little, you were a little t too mature for the, I oh went, yeah. I went with like. I'm sure my hair was thinning yeah, by that yeah. point. I was, yeah. I was going with like younger. I did used yeah. to have hair, just so y'all know. Yeah. Um, so um, just can you rattle off some of the shows you've been in? Okay, well, since almost all of them have been in my adult life while I was teaching here. Right. Okay. I did in high school audition for Anything Goes, um, and I got a chorus part. Woo! Um, and, but then everything else, 1997, um, I worked here with another teacher who has since opened her own dance school. Right. Um, and Mr. that would be Friswell. Tracy Friswell Jacobs, for yep. those of you familiar with Dell Arts. Um, she convinced me to go on an audition with her. Yeah. We both really love the show Little Shop of Horrors. She and I auditioned for Seymour and Audrey and got it. Aww. Um, and it was hugely fun. Yeah. Um, but we did that in uh, 97. At the same time, like a, the next day, we went to, Mil to Milburn, mm -hmm. and we auditioned for Crazy For You, which is fun, because that's a tap show, and I don't dance. Yeah. <laughs> but I got in the show that's good. as a chorus part. So when there were the big <laughs> tap numbers, um, the, the, the um, oh choreographer, Patricia. Uh, Richardson. Patty yes, Richardson. Patty Richardson, mm -hmm. OK? Liked something she called the blob. Yes. And I was always in the back of the blob yes. so nobody could see yeah, my yeah. feet. I totally I get it. It was really smart. Good. It was good planning. Yeah. She's <laughs> smart. She's smart. But I can sing okay, so every right. once in a while they want me in a part. Right. Now, you were also here for me. You played Fagin in Oliver. Because you gave me the part I didn't want. Yes. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> you were awesome. You were awesome. I had so much fun doing that. Right. It was that was so, that was great. I know. That was 2002. That's how long ago that was. I don't even know if they were born. No, they Probably weren't. Probably not. Most of them. Okay. I'm going to switch gears. Cause yeah. Because we were going to run out of time. And no, I have to get okay. to a couple of things. <laughs> S you mentioned to me something about Jeopardy. I audition for Jeopardy every single year. I want to be on that show. I'm smarter than a lot of those people. Okay. Okay, there was, I am by no means a sports person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I belong at an art school, let me yeah. just say. Um, there was a football category last season. They ran the category. They, they saved it till the right. very end. They ran the category. And what I mean they ran the category, nobody went for the football questions. And then they just went through them. Mm -hmm. And not a single person buzzed in on any of the answers. And I know nothing about football, but I could have answered some of those questions. Oh. 
I, I'm a trivia nerd. I, I, I know stupid things that have no value to the human race whatsoever, except that they could make me money on a game show. And you haven't been on it yet. And I haven't been on it yet. All right, well, so I audition for it every year. I'm hoping someday to actually pass the test and get to go out to California. That'd be great. Yeah. So um, then you also, did you try out for Smarter, You're Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? I tried grader? out. I put in an audition packet for um, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Um, and my absolute favorite part about that, it was right as the show was, was kind of failing the first time around, and there was a thing on the audition packet, and I just didn't know how to answer it. And okay. it said, is there anything special that we should know about you? <laughs> and what I wrote down was, I'm standing right behind you. <laughs> That's <'Cause> awesome! <laughs> I just wanted... <laughs> Somebody in a studio somewhere to be reading this and go. <laughs> and then at the very end, it said, in conclusion, is there anything else we should know about you? So I wrote, I'm still standing <laughs> right you, No call. Somehow I never heard from oh. them. Maybe they thought I was a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, two things I want to talk to you about yes. before we're done. You can take it. You can oh, take I it. also did audition for um, um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah. I actually went through the audition, took the test, passed the test, did the interview, and was just waiting for the call. Oh, no. And still waiting. <sighs> Nobody wants me to be a millionaire. <sighs> I want you to be a millionaire. <laughs> I want me to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, Two, two, two more things I want to ask you. Apparently, you took a trip in an ambulance. <laughs> this year. I had no idea this okay. happened. Okay. So, it was during my eighth period class. Okay. It was, was it this year? It, oh, yeah. It was, a couple, it was September. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I had this headache that came on with the strength of somebody hitting me in the back of the head with a baseball Oof. bat. Oof. Um, if you know those, those old-timey news, news reporter cameras, you know right. the flashbulb, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that, that pop? Yep. That's essentially what I felt like I heard in my head. And I went from I'm fine to I'm going to fall down. Oof. <laughs> okay. Now. While teaching. It, while teaching, yeah, my eighth period class. Okay, I told them all about it. I was like, yeah, you see me bracing myself? I'm a little dizzy. I think we'll be okay. I tried to make contact with the office. I apparently was not really in my right mind because I didn't do a good job of it and, yeah. and nobody wa was aware that, that I was mm. having an issue and really thought I should go see the nurse. Okay, so I taught the rest of the class. We got to lunchtime. I got all the kids out of the class. I went up to the nurse. I said, I have a really bad headache. It came on really suddenly. I told her the flashbulb thing yep. and she went, let me take your blood pressure. And my blood pressure was Because now I'm a little nervous. Right. Well, then she started, now, Everything the nurse did was perfect. She did everything right by the book, everything yeah. she should have done. She, all she was trying to do was make sure I was okay. But I started to recognize the things she was doing. She was looking to see if I was having a heart attack. Yeah, she right. was looking to see if I was Stroke, having a stroke. Yeah. And then she kept taking my blood pressure. And every time I recognized what she was doing, it was making me more nervous. Mm -hmm. So my blood pressure was higher every right, single right. time oh <laughs> they took my blood pressure. So wow. by the time she called 911, oh. they were really scared. Oh. <laughs> and so was I. <laughs> um, so it turns out I have migraines. So I've finally it. been diagnosed. Oh. I've been trying to get that diagnosis for 20 years. So that's great yep. that it's not anything. All right, cool. Yeah. Awesome. It's uh, no big. Oh. <laughs> One last very yeah. brief question. Uh -huh. um, you talked to me about this tarantula. <laughs> I have no idea what... All right. So, I told you I'm the bird man of Cab Calloway. Right, yes. All right. My favorite part of this story is that this story is not about me at all, and yet somehow I'm involved. Okay. Okay. So, this was back when I taught in room 117, which is Mr. Cafeter's room now. Okay. Okay. It was my, I think, second year here. Okay. Our... I'm pretty sure. Um, when I was hired in 96, I taught sixth grade and half the seventh grade. And Mrs. Williams, I'm sorry, I taught eighth grade and half the seventh grade. Mrs. Williams taught sixth grade and the other half okay. of the seventh grade. 
Uh, Mrs. Williams went out on an extended medical leave, and she was covered by a substitute for an extremely long time. There was a and she had a menagerie in her classroom. She told all of the kids, if you have small pets you want to bring in, bring them in. So she had this set of tables in what's now Mr. Rigby's room. Okay. And it was covered in small animals. There was wow. a sixth grade girl who had a pet tarantula. Okay. And for those of you who don't know, tarantulas are apparently extremely good pets. They are very docile. You can pick them up. You can pet them. They respond really well. They generally oh. don't bite you. And even if they do, you probably won't die. Okay, it's like a wasp sting. Okay. Okay, um, but she was she was under the under the um, direction that she only brings the tarantula out of its cage not during class times, like before school, mm. after school, all of that. Well, then the teacher left, and a substitute came in, and sometimes, not that any of you would ever do this, but sometimes the rules get somewhat ignored when there's a substitute in the mm. room. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this lovely child, who really was a lovely child, brought out Harriet, which was spelled Harry It. <laughs> That's cute. Okay. Okay. Brought out Harriet while there was a class in session mm. and was there with her pet tarantula. Mm. Just so you know, before we go into this, I'm horrifically arachnophobic. Okay. Okay. I blame my parents for that. We'll see if we have time for that. Okay. <laughs> She has the tarantula out. Some kid makes some move. It spooks the tarantula. Oh no. The tarantula goes bloop and jumps out of her <gasps> hand. Now, you know, you know little bugs. When they fall, it, they just <coughs> float down like a feather and run away. Well, this is a tarantula. <coughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Falls, lands on its back, mortally wounds <gasps> itself. No. Flips itself back over onto its legs runs towards the cabinets <laughs> in the walls, gets up under the cabinets that are physically attached to the walls, oh no. disappears behind a trail of its own entrails, oh and no. is never seen again. Oh, no! <laughs> okay. It became my job to find it. Ugh. Because there was a substitute there. The dean at the time. This hold was on, hold on. This was before Dean Rumschlag. Okay. Okay. The dean at the time made it my cross to bear, made it my problem that this thing never showed up. I was absolutely positive by the trail of goo right. that this thing had walked into the wall, had curled up, desiccated like a dead spider, right. was dried up and dead in there. Yep. And probably when they renovated Mr. Rigby's room, it was found and right. nobody remarked right. on it because they just found a big old dead spider. Oof. Okay. Um, so the kids all knew that the spider was never found. So for the next year, Every once in a while, a kid in the cafeteria would the tarantula, oh my God. <laughs> and the entire cafeteria would panic. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And that was my fault. <laughs> well, I think that's a great way to okay. end our. <laughs> so thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Dread. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So where you do I go now? I exit. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs>